air coolers, also known as tower coolers. They're designed to move heat away from your processor quickly and efficiently. They've been around longer than I can remember, and in that time, they've become a staple piece of hardware in millions of PCs for gamers, creators, and general desktops. And that is for good reason. You see, an air cooler is a no-nonsense, fit-and-forget solution for cooling your processor. They don't rely on liquid, nor do they require additional sources of power. Their strength can be found in that very simplicity, which in a modern era of aesthetic PC building can often feel observed as mundane. That's not to say that an air cooler doesn't come with its own aesthetic values though, evidently. From tiny ITX builds right through to large mid towers, the trusty air cooler comes in many different shapes, sizes, and aesthetics. If you're seeking all out performance, low noise levels, or simply searching for that perfect fit and forget tower, let's take a look at five solid choice air coolers that you can purchase right now in 2025. Starting off small, the ID Cooling IS55 has been one of our go-to small form factor coolers for a number of years now, thanks to its low profile design and adaptability. Coming in at around $40, this compact cooler houses a full-size 120mm slim fan as standard, which performs great straight off the bat. This allows mini ITX motherboards to retain a shallow overall height for cases with less than ideal cooling space. With RAM compatibility in mind, this cooler has been quite generous, permitting 33mm of RAM height. This means you'll be limited to non-RGB modules, and that requires a little extra thought when planning ahead. Inside the box, you'll also find that ID Cooling have included some longer length screws. These are ideal for upgrading the slim fan to a full thickness one. This can be especially advantageous for moving more air with less noise, but of course, only if your build permits the additional space to accommodate that thicker fan. The ID Cooling IS range offers multiple low profile coolers of varying levels of height, but the IS55 specifically gets our seal of approval and continues to prevail in small form factor builds. Simple, yet stylish in its own rights, the Freezer 36 from Arctic is a bold and powerful dual fan tower cooler with a few interesting quirks of its own. With the ability to cool hot processors such as Intel's i9-14900K, the Freezer 36 retains a modest footprint whilst moving plenty of air thanks to those P-series fans. Speaking of fans, Arctic made an interesting decision to change the way those P-series fans mount on the heatsink. Most coolers typically have two retaining clips which stretch over and latch onto the side of the heatsink. The Freezer 36 does away with this and replaces the mounting method for a simplified click system. The idea here is simple, the fan quite literally pushes and clicks into place. So if you need to change a fan, simply take out the screws from the old one, insert them into the new one and click back into place. Could this be a LAN gamer's dream cooler? Perhaps. The Freezer 36 comes in several variations to complement your build. Let's face it, this one is begging to be on display after all. From white towers to black and not forgetting my favourite which shows off those oh so sexy copper heat pipes. Priced between $30 and $50, this cooler is without a doubt an excellent choice and it gets our hat tilt. Where true stealth meets epic performance, naturally we find Be Quiet. The Dark Rock Pro 5 brings the blackout aesthetic to a whole new level and those chrome accents only add to the classy vibes that come with it. Boasting 7 high performance heat pipes and 2 excellent silent wing fans, this cooler maximises airflow with very little effort. Unlike most tower coolers, the Dark Rock Pro 5 has a switch which allows two different fan speeds between quiet mode and performance. Quiet mode will cap the fan curve at 1500 RPM, whereas the performance mode will push this 500 more to 2000 RPM. The quiet mode can be especially useful in sound sensitive environments to limit the fan curve and retain lower volumes when required. The silent wing fans from Be Quiet have a rubberized fan frame which works in tandem with their six pole motors to further reduce vibrations. The result? An iconic design language which 
true to the name, provides a quiet, high-performance cooler which can even be mounted using liquid metal thermal grease. If bold design language, low noise and cooling power is your thing, the Dark Rock Pro 5 will no doubt tick all the right boxes. But, be mindful that this one will set you back with very little change from $100. Could the NH-U12A from Noctua be one of the most goated air coolers of all time? Well, I guess that depends who you ask. If you ask me, I'd be inclined to agree. Noctua's NH-U12A is more than time proven at this point for its raw performance and has remained that way for the last 6 years. Coming in with their iconic brown and beige aesthetic, the original NH-U12A packs two flagship NF-A12X25 fans which move air through the heatsink and over seven heat pipes, and they do all of this while making very little noise, if any at all. This cooler is iconic, not just for the quirky branded colours and low noise levels, but for the fact it packs 140mm tower cooler performance into a 120mm form factor. This is thanks to those NF-A12X25 fans, combined with those seven heat pipes and 37% more surface area on the fin stacks. Standing at 158mm tall, the NH-U12A is compatible with almost every PC case on the market, with the exception of some mini ITX, of course. Still not loving the brown aesthetic? Well, you are wrong, but Noctua have heard you. The NH-U12A also comes in a full stealth blackout, better known as the Chromax version. This one not only looks incredible for those all black premium builds, but also fits in nicely within a professional environment. With aesthetic PC building in mind, Noctua also released interchangeable heat sink covers for the NH-U12A, which allow PC DIYers to change the overall vibe to something a bit more in keeping with their setup. Sometimes, it's the little details which often make the biggest impact. So I guess the question is, will you be going for that oh so tempting coffee and cream aesthetic, or will you hide in the shadows with a ninja blackout vibe? Either way, at $130, this premium option continues to pack a punch and hold its place as one of the best coolers that you can buy right now. Even if your eyes are watering at the price, it's justified, I promise. How much cooling? Yes. Following on from the mighty NHU12A, Noctua recently released the second generation of its iconic D15. Meet the G2, now boasting two speed offset NF A14X25R 140mm fans. This one has eight heat pipes and asymmetrical fin stacks. Built to perform, this cooler rivals the efficiency of many liquid all-in-one coolers and does so whilst making its physical presence known too. The NH D15 G2 is big, like really big. Sure, it's smaller than the first generation D15, but this one does stand at 168mm tall with fans, though large in size, it doesn't feel overpowering once inside your system. Instead, I like to think of it more mesmerising, thanks to those 140mm fans slowly spiralling away. The NHD15 G2 is available as three different variations. The standard version is a regular all-rounder, which should work for most PC builds. Noctua have refined the G2 to be one of the best performing air coolers on the market to strike a balance between performance and noise levels. Whilst there's no official date for seeing a blackout Chromax version of this one, we're eager to get hands on with that when it does come out for sure. Coming in at an eye-watering price just shy of $180, the NHD15 G2 might be one of the most expensive air coolers that you can buy, but when it rivals similarly priced liquid coolers, and not to mention the research and development from Noctua, it's very easy to justify this one. Regardless of spending $30 or $200 on a CPU cooler, they all work in a similar way. The aim is to feed your tower with cold air and quickly remove the warm straight back out again. Sure. Some of the more premium options will carry their own unique quirks and features which might be a little bit more specific to your individual use, or perhaps your CPU is very hot by design, so you're limited to those larger coolers. There's a lot out there for us PC DIYers to build with, so here's two more honourable mentions to add to that list. 
Where excellent performance meets relative low cost, we find Thermal Rhyme. The Peerless Assassin has carved its way into the PC DIY community over the last couple of years, not just because it punches above its weight when it comes to price, but it also ticks the boxes for solid aesthetics at those lower budgets too. Thermal Wright have been truly dialing in on the details when it comes to refining the art of tower heat sinks and its relationship with its paired fans, putting them right up there with some of the best well-known brands and quite rightly so too. And whilst Thermal Wright have more air cool SKUs than I can possibly comprehend, the Peerless Assassin 120 deserves a mention here for being under $40 and looking so mighty fine. Scythe don't really need an introduction when it comes to PC cooling. As one of the OGs, they've made some of the best CPU coolers that we've ever seen and tested. The Fuma 3 is an extremely powerful twin tower heatsink with an asymmetrical structure. With its high fin density and six 6mm heat pipes, the Fuma 3 also ships with two K's Flex 120 fans, which move air differently to how you would normally see that. To explain just how they move the air, both fans rotate in opposite directions. Scythe call this a reverse airflow design to create higher static pressure along with an increased and consistent airflow. Whatever that sorcery is, the Scythe magic works and it's under 50 bucks. From the Mugen to the Kotetsu and everything between, Scythe are worth keeping a close eye on. Over the last 150 plus PC builds on the channel, I've had a lot of opportunities to get hands on with so many different air coolers and honestly, none of them have been particularly bad. So selecting a small handful to share here wasn't an easy task. You see, air coolers should be chosen based on your CPU's wattage or TDP. When all else fails, just go bigger than you need. It's a safe bet. So what will you be choosing for your next build? Will it be a small form factor cooler or Sergeant Colossal Windblower 4 million? Which cooler are you using right now? As always, I'll leave links in the description below for all of the products mentioned here. And if you want to leave a like and subscribe, that would be rather cool indeed. But until next time. <laughs>